All right. <sighs> Welcome back to this nonsense. It's uh, Wario Land. No, I'm not. I'm not going on camera today. I I just don't feel like it. But you know, just picture me being an animated Italian man, and you got yourself. You got yourself a show. So um. Yeah, that's like a, a special occasion rarity kind of thing for me. Just... Uh... Alright. A good Star Wars day did everyone have? What do you do on Star Wars Day? Like, because the next day is Cinco de Mayo, so you're supposed to, like, I guess, you know, go out and drink? I don't know. But what do you do on Star Wars Day? Just, like, you watch Star Wars and then just, that's it? Buy, buy product. Well, yeah, chat, I hate to say it, but... I maybe went and bought product. <laughs> I did buy a product. I I got I got Lego. I did. I didn't get the Lars Homestead with Aunt Baru, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the story. I got the set of, uh, the trash compactor. It's a diorama, so it's Lego for adults. That's, you know... So, you know, leave those in your house if you're an adult, and, um... You'll be real cool when people come over. But, yeah, I guess I just... I was, you know, playing the Lego Star Wars game, and I said, you know what? I'll do that. And I got a free ATST. I clapped. And, uh, I got a Beskar Ingyat keychain. I don't know, it was worth it, as far as I'm concerned. I'm enjoying building it. I'm- I consumed. It was... God, the employee at the Lego store, one of them, was dressed in full Jedi robes, and she looked like she was, like, just done with life. How come you skipped the Lars Homestead? Because I would have had to spend an extra $80 or so, or $70, to get the, uh, Aunt Baru burning. Oh, man. Though it's funny because, um, one of the employees was talking and said that their co-worker took a skeleton from the Minecraft set and put it next to Aunt Baru on the display figure. And when he looked over, like, because he was trying to, like, tell, explain to people what they get, um, as a, uh, you know, as a free gift, free. <laughs> uh, he noticed that it was Aunt Baru with a skeleton, and he was like, oh, 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 that's, that's not right, that's not right, no, no, I'm sorry, sorry. No, no. It's not spelled B-A-H-R-O-O, -O, but you know what, I like it better that way, Aunt Baru. Get fucked. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm just kind of taking my time with it because it's not a set that you're. It like they make these adult Star Wars Lego sets where they put like a little Star Wars thing. It looks like a plaque, and like the idea is that it's supposed to look good on a shelf, and like you're not really gonna play with it. I say adult, but you know what I mean. Oh, I did that at level already, didn't I? Ah, alright. I thought I left that for myself. The, my, my previous thought of Wario Land was that I had left that level for next time. Turns out, I did the level. Hey, at least I got some coins out of it. But, 
I, I enjoy the trash compactor scene, and I, I, I bought it. I haven't built a Lego set in a while, so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Alright. Um, is, should I go back here? And get the, um... Vinny, adult or Star Wars, you can't have both. What if you're an adult actor in the Star Wars movies? I, I listened to an interview with Ewan McGregor, and he, um... He said that he rewatched the prequels to prep for his role, and he said, he was like, My god, those movies are fucking terrible. No, he said he watched them, and he said it was kind of cool to watch them now that people are older and appreciate them. And he said it was fun, because, you know, maybe they weren't the best received when he was in them. And you know what? I think it's... He, he was a great... Even though the dialogue was a little weird sometimes, I think he always did a great job. So, it's nice that people appreciate him. I don't think he was ever really an issue. But, I guess it's like Hayden Christensen too, people gave him shit for like, once again, the sand line. But, you know, good for him. He's, he's, uh, being embraced and people enjoy him and are happy that he's back, and I'm, I am too. But just remember, in 20 years, the kids that watched the sequels growing up are gonna write 25-page articles on some future website about how secretly genius they are! So just wait for that, that'll be fun. Anyway, I'm building uh, the trash compactor scene. I, I really relate to trash, you know? Oh, fuck. Okay, so I see where I have to go. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, um... So, I watched that Tony Hawk documentary. It's called Until the Wheels Fall Off. I wanted to just mention a couple things. One... It's not really about the games very much at all. Minimal information about the games, but... The impact of them on Tony Hawk's life... Is very... Like... You know, it, it's... it's emphasized. It's emphasized. But, they don't, like, go into the development of the games. That said, it was a very fucking good documentary. I loved it. Because it was so... First of all, I didn't realize... ...what a broken kind of dude Tony Hawk was. But his motivation to become that famous... ...early on, like, real, real young... Like, seeing him, like, turn into... Because, you know, you look at Tony Hawk, he seems like just a cool dude. But... He had his demons, he struggled, and there was, like, a couple things that kind of hit close to home. Talking about, like, the insecurities he had going into it that were exacerbated by the fame. I was like... Dog, I didn't expect this, I just thought you were gonna skate. Just do the 900, bro, do the 900. And then, like, you know, it, the documentary's also about him getting older. And, like, him still skating. And him maybe not being able to do some of the things he used to do, but it's his favorite thing. It's the thing he loves the most. So, yeah, I, I think it's phenomenal. And I would recommend it. There's a lot of funny things in there, too. Really good music. Um, really interesting stuff about the business that I had no idea about. And... Interviews with Rodney Mullen, who is now my favorite skater. <laughs> and they don't- listen, the documentary doesn't even show him skating. He's just a fascinating dude. He's like a wizard. He's- he's- first of all, he has given TED Talks. He is super intelligent, he has a very interesting way of talking, and he's very... Like, the way he connects from points A to B to C to D, he goes from point A to C, you know, and he makes you understand by the way he talks, but it's just, he's a really interesting guy. Um, and Tony Hawk is just really... Like, his story is interesting, but I just think that the, the dude himself, he seems like... Like a real-ass human being, who's just extremely talented. And, uh... It wasn't always that way. Anyway, 
That and also seeing the build up to the 900. I remember hearing about it when I was a kid, but I had never seen it. Like seeing him try over and over again on TV, like on live TV, and then finally get it. Even though I knew he was going to get it, oh yeah, on the X Games, I couldn't... Like, I, I was like, is he gonna get it? Holy shit. Like, the tension was amazing. So yeah, um... I don't know, man. I, I would say watch it if you can. That, and one other thing, too, that I didn't realize, because again, skating was always ever just in my peripheral. He was, like, not liked Tony Hawk. What I mean by that is... His dad was the head of one of the organizations and was, like, always around. And he was doing tricks in a weird way that other skaters weren't. Because he was a really small dude. Like, really skinny. And then he got really good, and he got really famous, and he was winning these competitions. And so a lot of skaters, not a lot, but, a, you know, a bunch of them, like, didn't like him. I just thought, oh, he's the Birdman, of course, people like Tony. No, people fucking kind of didn't like the dude all that much. So... It just goes to show you, there's like, kind of a story and a path behind every person, every, every career, every, like... Maybe everyone that paves some ground. And, um... He- there's no doubt he changed the face of skateboarding. But seeing what it was before him... ...was very interesting. I'm gonna stop ranting about this now, because I'm probably giving too much away, and it's probably kind of annoying for some people, but... ...I just thought it was great. Vinny, did people hate you when you started doing funny YouTube Twitch? Dog, people still hate me. It's true, though. I mean, you can't... Like I said the other day, you could be the sweetest peach, which I'm not, but I, you know... I don't think I'm that bad. Um, but some people just don't like peaches. Yeah, of course. And and yes, at the time, and still do, and, and that's fine. You know, I'm... I... It's okay. You don't have to watch. And also, you know, think about any of the, like, people... Because I'm not even, like... Right now on Twitch, I'm doing okay. I'm- I'm very pleased with my audience size. I'm- It's like I'm extremely happy <laughs> with the amount of people that watch what I do. But when you look at some of the bigger YouTube, uh, streamers... ...that had just came out of nowhere and became super, super successful super quickly... ...that definitely... ...garners some ire from people. Like, that's unavoidable, in my opinion. And, um, the whole VTuber thing, too, like... For me, I don't mind the VTuber stuff because I don't see it as competition. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, they're doing their thing, I'm doing mine, it's- it's fine. The tide is up. But you cannot deny that VTubers made it tremendously popular on Twitch very, very quickly. And if you've been working at this for ten years or more, and you get, like, say, 200 viewers, you know, whatever. And then a VTuber shows up, and they get, like, 6,000 in a couple months. Yeah, that's gonna lead to some salt. And it's kinda hard if, if you're grinding away at this thing, and you haven't found your own level of success, and maybe you deserve it. Just like all the bands out there that are great that don't get discovered. There's going to be some, some really fucking difficult feelings that you have to grapple with. And maybe it's not fair, but... Life kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> so, it's, it's worth being aware of those feelings, but also... Anyone new on a scene that becomes tremendously popular and maybe even changes the form a little bit... ...is going to get some, some people that look at them and, and like, give them the side eye, you know? But, um, 
I think the only thing to do is just keep doing what you do best and, and try not to... I mean, you can chase trends, maybe that'll work if, if it's truly something you're good at and like. But if you're, um... It sounds like such, like, hollow advice, it almost sounds... Like just a, an, empty, an empty platitude, but really you kind of just have to be who you are and... Try not to focus too much on what other people are doing. Some people would look at me and say, oh, Vinny's had success, what what was his, you know, like, what worked? And it's like, there's no one thing, but I will say this. I really, at, after a certain point, didn't really pay attention to what other people were doing, because that would have made me miserable. What I mean is, the trends on Twitch never really appealed to me, which is why I don't really do, like, hypothons and... Um, you know, I only have done face cam a little bit, which is ironic because Wario has been face cam. Um, so I, I guess I kind of do things... Like, I haven't done sponsorships. I kind of don't do the Twitch thing the way a lot of the big Twitch streamers do it. And it's been better for me. And it's been a way for me to retain interest in this in this job, this hobby, this thing that I enjoy doing over years without getting burnt out on it too much. Granted, that's not entirely accurate because there's always going to be some burnout. But that's where, you know, you, you I've readjusted and I figured out a way to continue enjoying it. But there's, um, there's an element of I'm just happy to do what I do. And if it means I'm missing out on a couple thousand dollars here and there, that's fine. However, there are smaller streamers that can barely afford their bills because it's so fucking expensive to live right now. And though that I'm in a different I'm not in that category. You know, that's different. I don't know what that struggle is like. I've had the struggle at points in my life where I had like $200 to my name. I've made it out of that struggle. I'm very pleased and I'm I'm grateful to my audience for helping me get out of that. Thank you. Thank you audience. I appreciate it very much. But it's worth noting that sometimes you can kind of pave your own way, but there's also a lot of luck. There's a lot of fucking luck that goes behind it. And sometimes it's just not in the cards. There are people that, like, grind and, and try and like, oh, my career is going to be YouTuber. No, it's not. Y you can't plan for that. The best thing you can do is try it. You know, if unless you started years ago, or if you're really good, or if you have a team behind you, or you do, you know, you have some gimmick, or you're really, 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 like, dedicated. It's hard. There's just too many of us. Oh. This is a cool level. I don't remember this from when I was a kid, but... What if my gimmick is being utter shit? Hey, that's mine. You can't take it. And also, um... I think it's also worth noting that... People are going to be influenced. And you kinda... What, what game was it? Where the developers... Was it PUBG? Where they're like, they are stealing our concept. I mean, that's how influence, you know, through music or through any art form just happens, is, is you, you know, a thing happens, it gets popular, and people do it. You know, other people have done corruptions. I wasn't the first, I won't be the last, that's fine. Vinny, I farmed the stage as a kid, it's literally the whole point of it. it can get 800 plus coins super fast. There's no such thing as originality, says a chat member. I think there is, it's just, it's, it becomes more rare because in time there's just this, 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 like, shotgun effect of the amount of stuff out there. My music isn't original. I know that. But I'm also working with the form that is rock music, which started getting popular in the 50s. It's all been done in rock, in my opinion, but you can do little things to keep it, to, to make it yours. Like, 
no matter what my music sounds like with guitars and production and drums and bass, that's rock, my songs are still my own. I may have a little melody floating around in my head that was like Echo and the Bunnymen or something, where I'm like, what, what was that? Oh, I guess it's mine. That happens sometimes, but, you know, that's... You just create because it's you. And it doesn't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel as long as you're happy with it and you're saying something worthwhile. But you can still be original within your domain. Some screen tearing we got here. Uh, do I want to get... You know what? Let me do that stage one more time. Someone in chat named Hate Industry just said all art is garbage. Well, you live up to your name, chat member. Don't you think corruptions are you one or main gimmick? Yep. Corruptions is why you're you're here watching right now. But does anyone else have a scrolling Yoda as their background? But like I said, corruptions I found the concept on YouTube in like 2010 or 9, like it was so crusty and rudimentary, rudimentary, and it didn't have a ton of views. And I was like, what is this? Forced glitching? What is this stuff? And it was just really interesting to me. That's why I said I wasn't the first, I won't be the last. But I'm grateful for corruptions and I enjoy them. I think they're great, but you know, I've tried to diversify my portfolio a little bit. I, I think. Whether or not you like me, I'm proud of some of the dumb shit I've done. You know, the Mario Luigi voice is kind of fun. People like that. I've done a lot of different types of things. I've done Grey Leno, which is probably my, like, proudest accomplishment to date, I think. But yeah, corruptions are, are the thing. The Anakin voice? Oh. I played the, the bird game with eggs. Speaking of birds... Aww. Oh, that wasn't worth it at all. I think the, the colors look good here. I mean, it's... It's kind of simple. But it works. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. It can't have been that interesting. But, um... The, the quote of, don't give up on your dreams... I think that's true to a degree. But it's okay to switch to different dreams. If the one dream is just oversaturated and not working and making you feel like shit. <laughs> that's, that's my advice. That's, that's the realistic part of the advice that I would give. And also, I, I wish life wasn't as scummy as it is, and I, I wish people could also just be happy and not worry about having to pay their bills month to month, and, you know, healthcare and blah blah blah. It just makes life harder. So... I mean, it would be great if we all could pursue the things we're most interested in. You know, like, if, if we had more, like, time for that. Like, I can do it, and that's why I made my music. And that's been the greatest, like, gift for me, not to get, like, weird or sappy about it. It's true, though, because, you know, I did music, and then just working the 9 to 5 shift at a bunch of different jobs kind of killed music for me, and I didn't do it for, like, five years. So... More than that, just about. 
But hang in there, everybody. And I, you know, I wish you all the best of luck in shit life when it gets shitty. And also being able to, like, kind of actually have a good time when things are good, which can be tough. I, I sometimes have an issue with that. If I'm in, like, uh, anxiety depresso mode, I'm like, you know what? I'm not having a good time, even though I am. It's like, fuck you, brain. Vinny, where's the Game Boy camera? Uh, just don't feel like it. It's fun once in a while, and if I play future Game Boy games, I'll probably bring it back, but I, I gotta be honest, I just don't love being on camera. I feel comfortable, more or less, I just, it's just, I'm lazy. weird-looking enemy. Chat, you know I've never played Kirby's Air Ride? I was watching Ant Dude did a video on ranking all the Kirby games. And... I may... I may check out Air Ride at some point. I want to see what it's all about. I know they reused one of the fun, the main mechanics uh, for Smash 3DS. So I'm kind of curious to see what that's like. Ah, oh, goddammit. City Trial, basically the best thing to come from it. Oh, one day. One day I will check that game out. After I'm done with Wario, I have a couple other things I might want to check out first, but... It seems like it could be fun. There's a lot of interesting Kirby games. There's the, um... The pinball one? I didn't even know there were that many fucking Kirby games. Why did I think that would be worth it? But one of the things that I'm interested in with Air Ride is, since I just got done playing a Kirby game, I don't feel like playing another one. But I definitely think Air Ride is an exception. And I could just play, like, a little bit of it. Maybe, like, one or two sessions, and get a feel for it. Maybe try net play. Yeah, I mean, it's just Kirby in name, and with the characters, but, like, the gameplay is obviously, like, totally different. Also, I have a question for chat. So, E3 is not happening this year, right? I seem to just block these things out, but E3 is pulped? Right, okay, so Jeff Keighley's doing a summer games event in IMAX? What- does anyone know what that is? IMAX is helping with it. It's being aired in IMAX in select theaters. Hang on, I'm gonna see if I can get that bull hat. Still here. 
It's all being streamed. So, it's not E3, but do you... Is there any word that, like, there's gonna be announcements and companies? Like, are we gonna get anything close to E3? So there will be announcements. What I would like is just anything. Just, just like some I just want an embarrassing conference. Why can't we get man? Summer Games Fest said it's go, still going to do that. Well, we're also kind of overdue for a Nintendo Direct by the time that rolls around. Expect a lot of Splatoon 3. Got any wild predictions? The return of Donkey Kong. I don't think we're gonna get Breath of the Wilds to information just by virtue of the fact that it's not coming out this year. Like, not too much. Maybe we'll get a title drop. I think a title drop would be nice. Maybe a trailer, but not like... You remember when they did a big in-depth Breath of the Wild E3? Where the whole thing was Breath of the Wild themed? And that's all they had? No, seriously, that- that is all they had. I don't remember there being power stars in this game. Well, I killed two enemies with it. Ow. Vinny, you got one last stream. Was I talking about some other nonsense? God damn it. Yeah, Mario Strikers. Yeah. I mean, there's some stuff. I, I mean, you know, Advance Wars may eventually release. It's not like Advance Wars was a heavy hitter, but at the very least it was something. This goofy little remix. But yeah, I mean, we we know some stuff that's coming out. Splatoon's gonna be probably their big release, um, and Pokemon. So we know that's gonna happen. Strikers is gonna happen too. So they, it's not like they don't have games, but I feel like there's still something missing. I don't know what it is. I feel like there's- there's a couple things missing from this lineup. Well, Xenoblade is also releasing. And early- earlier. So that's something. But not for me. That's for other people. We got Mario Maker on the Switch. 
We've got a 3D Mario Collectathon. We even got a number of re-releases, including one with a great new game mode. I really like Bowser's Fury. I thought that was actually a cool concept that could be expanded on. But, like, from Mario stuff... I wonder if there's anything left they're gonna do on the Switch. See, Wario should just come back then. I, you know, we, we already had a pretty cool WarioWare game. Albeit a little short, and the collectibles, uh, so, excuse me, the unlockables didn't really do it for me. But the game was cool. But like a new War... I'm telling you, if Nintendo really wants to pull out the big guns, and do something different... Wario game with playable Waluigi. Similar to Wario World, with different and new game mechanics, and Wario and Waluigi play differently. That's what they could do if they want to, like, get them social media bonus points. Because you know everyone's going to be posting Waluigi's cock as soon as that happens. That's just free advertisement. Just Waluigi is a, an advertisement machine. F-Zero... I don't think F-Zero ever really sold all that well for Nintendo, so that's not... I, you know, I would love to see it, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm playing this on BGB. Chat member. Game Boy and GBA games on NSO. Which is fine. I mean, there's some great games across those consoles, make no mistake. But I hope they don't put it into the expensive tier. Because I'm not upgrading. It's already very easy for me to play those portably. Of course, we're gonna get Mario Kart DLC. Does anyone know when the next Mario Kart DLC pack dro uh, drops? Probably in June. Well, if Nintendo wanted to be real cavalier about it, they could just release it the same day they announce it. Like, do a Nintendo Direct, show it off, and be like, New Mario Kart DLC launches today alongside Hamtaro Ham Ham Adventures in Wonderland. Developed by the person who made Balan Wonderworld, whose name escapes me at the moment, Yuji Naka. This time we're going to allow him to finish the game and we won't get sued. I still find that kind of bizarre because even if that game wasn't finished, the, the concept of the game... Like, if they finished it, how much better would it have been? should play it as a joke. Almost did. Oh, I'm not going to, but you know what? The content around that game... 
that the tubers were making was getting big views. Am I going backwards? I just wanted to get a key so I could open up that door. What do you mean, almost did? Well, there was a demo. And then everyone else was making fun of it, and I was like, do I really need to join in on that? Like, the game is its own punchline. I'm hearing the, um, whatchamacallit game is not that great. Not game, what am I saying? The movie, the, the fucking <clears throat> Doctor Strange, Doctor Strangle. I hear it is not, like, particularly amazing. Which is a shame because, again, Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors, I think. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say he is. I need to watch more of his movies, but the ones I've seen... I love his directing style. I might have to check it out myself, because you know how people be, but... One of the complaints is that, um, I read... That it seemed like there was some cool ideas in there... That were restricted by studio notes. I don't know how someone could tell that by watching the movie. It was a 7 out of 10, maybe 8 better than the first. Well... Some people seem to like it. So I can't open that treasure chest unless I, unless my Wario is the big Wario. The previous director apparently quit because of studio interference. Do you remember when um, they fired? What's? I probably talked about this last night. You know what? Never mind. Edgar Wright from Ant Man. Yeah. Like I said, Disney is not exactly Disney Marvel, they, you know. They're not going to let a director do whatever the fuck they want without some interference and notes. Unless you're Ryan Johnson for some reason. If anything, I'll go back and get that treasure. I think that's a weird choice, to have, um, the treasure chest only open with big Wario. It makes sense, because small Wario is weak, and you cannot, like, sh like, booty blast or shoulder burst, but it's a shame to get the treasure and then not being able to get the treasure. <laughs> It means you need to get good. Bro. Do 
you ever see Dark Man chat with Liam Neeson's? I haven't seen the whole movie. That that's a movie I still need to watch. I remember it being on cable. And I remember just some weird fucking scenes. I was like, what is this fucking movie? And then there was a YouTube video where it was like early internet video of the scene where all the crazy shit happens at the carnival to Neeson's. And that was like early viral. But yeah, Sam Raimi has some pretty... ...pretty interesting directorial choices. Also, the, uh, Evil Dead TV show was pretty good. Like, surprisingly good. Ash vs. the Evil Dead, yeah. And also, when you have an actor who is doing action stuff in his late 50s, early 60s, which, by the way, Saul connected Bob Odenkirk from the movie Nobody. But when you have an actor who's doing that amount of, like, action, you, you gotta have some other cast members to help out. And you have to be able to, like, poke fun at it a little bit and work around it. And not just turn your main old character into an action hero. And have them, like, get blown backwards by, by a fucking explosion and then land on their spine. You know, you can't, you can't have that happen. Oh, I'm dead. I guess you could have that happen if you have a robot body. It's just badly done action. Look at Jonathan Banks as Mike. Jonathan Banks... Oh, there's a thing in this level. Um... Treasure. Yeah, um... They don't give him a lot to do in Saul, because he's clearly an older man. But when they do give him a little bit of action, it's it's shot well, and it's, like, within his means. And he still seems intimidating. Because it's, it's in the way the action is presented, but it's also in his performance, and just he has a, a presence to him, that actor. Why does the game name say Wario 3, but the title says Wario 1? Well, if you look closer, it says Mario Land 3. Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, they, they called it Super Mario Land 3 to boost the potential sales for brand recognition. Football, ha! <laughs> Also, here's another fun example. Keanu Reeves in John Wick versus Keanu Reeves in Matrix 4. Damn it. And also, Keanu Reeves is in his 50s. And, but he's good at it. He's good at the action. You just gotta, like, film him properly and, and you know... Today's bird day on the stream, I guess. Is this bird spitting out smaller birds? That is what's happening, right?
What, what species does this? And, and what sex organ is it named after? God damn it. The Deep Throater. It's the Throated Warbler. The Deep Throated Warbler. What was the Monty Python name? Also, do I still have the treasure? I do, okay. It throat war it was like throat wobbler mangrove. Yes, thank you. That's the name. I have to say, without knowing Monty Python, Monty Python skets uh, sketches described must sound painfully unfunny. Unless you actually have watched it. Because that's the other thing, too, is when people do the bits, they, like... You know, you, you can't do it justice. I can't. I do it anyway, but I can't. I know I can't. Wow, a lot easier that time. I wonder what changed. Hey, Vine Sauce, smash or pass Wario Land 1 bosses, says a chat member. Listen, chat member. Listen closely. Markiplier did that to Pokemon, and it put him in the hospital. Please explain. No. <laughs> no way out of here. It's the Parsley Woods. R number 31. Explain had to fart. Did, is that really what was wrong with him, though? For real? The dude just had to fart? He had surgery. Oh. Kinda not really somewhat incorrect. He had bad constipation. <sighs> Can I tell you a, an embarrassing secret? Do you, are you ready for some lore? For some embarrassing deep Vinny lore? Weirdly, it's going to make perfect sense. I have seen you two in concert. No, that's not the embarrassing part. Well, it is, but... I've seen you two in concert in like 2005, I think. Maybe earlier, but something like that. And I've told the story about how Bono was like, lay your head on my breast. Oh, oh! Fun fact, I was deeply constipated during that performance. You're welcome. Did listening to you 2 help? Well, it wasn't much longer after the show that the problem fixed itself. Hello, 
hello! We're at a place called Vertigo! When he went uno, dos, tres, catorce, I could feel like a little prairie dog. I was like, ah, oh, it's working. Now listen up, everybody. I don't talk much about politics at the U2 shows. However, I'm gonna lecture you about politics for the next two mi two minutes, and then another two minutes after this next song, and then five minutes later. But no, they were good. I enjoyed the show. I, I mean, I don't really like a lot of U2 anymore, but I definitely enjoyed the show. I, it was still at a time where Bono, uh, Boner sounded pretty okay vocally. And they did a lot of good stuff from their early albums and, and Octung Baby. So, you know, that's the U2 stuff I like. Joshua Tree, Octung Baby, and a couple early albums. Yes! Vinny, your old is showing. You wanna he oh, oh, my old is showing? You know my favorite band is the Beatles, right, chat member? That chat member just, like, aged like the reverse gif of, of uh, King Theoden in Lord of the Rings. As soon as he heard the word Beetle, he had to think back to the early 60s, and he was like, Oh, no! Me talking about early U2 and late 80s, early 90s U2 albums, and chat members like your old is showing. I was alive, at least, during that shit. Here's one. I am interested in Roman history. There's a trend of Zoomers getting into dad rock, though. You know what? That that works for me. Because I make dad rock. And, uh... I feel like if that's true, then I'm in the right market. Someone in chat just said, Imagine people making fun of another for liking a fucking band, in parentheses, unless it's Limp Biscuit." Amazing message, chat member. Even Dr. Eggman made fun of Limp Biscuit. Vinny, do you like Eric Idle's music? I am an Eric Idle fan, yeah. I, I, Eric Idle and John Cleese are my two favorite Monty Python members. I don't know which one I like more, but I like Eric Idle a lot. Like, his music is... It's good and funny. And the Ruddles are, are great. For those that don't know, the Ruddles were a parody of the Beatles. And it was just like, it, it mocked them. With love. With love. But it mocked them. And, uh... It was a movie and a series of sketches, but if you're ever interested in watching something ridiculous and you know the history, it's worth watching the Ruddles movie. And uh, I think... I think the John Lennon... So, Neil Innes played the John Lennon um, counterpart. And his name in the Ruddles is Ron Nasty. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea. <laughs> We, we all know about Lennon's reputation, I know, but they called him Ron Nasty. So... What's love? This is the thing I really liked about this game was the, um, the world map. Like, all the little cool things that happen. Fun fact, once you drain the water, the zone is now misnamed. 
you'd love Wario Land 3. Yeah, there's a chat member that's telling me it's a Metroidvania. Uh, you know, one day I might check it out. I might check it out. But this game is, like, really impressive. For OG Game Boy. Oh, I thought maybe there would be... Never mind. Also, that's another cool thing that this game did. You could just leave the level back to the world map. In Mario games, you just have to die. Yeah, Wario Land 2 was the one... Some chat member said 4 is better than 3 is better than 1 is better than 2. Well, I do love Wario Land 4. I streamed that some time ago. Wario Land 2, I bought eagerly on my Game Boy Color, and it just did not stick. It's not that it was bad, by any means, and I told the story already. It, there's a chance I would give it another shot. But I liked 4 a lot, and for some reason, 2 just did not... ...appeal to me in, in the way that this game did. Even though 2 did some really cool things. That had a lot of really interesting alternate paths and stuff. What's your favorite Game Boy slash Game Boy Color game? I mean, it's Link's Awakening. It's gotta be. It's definitely not Castlevania. It's Quirk. Remember Quirk? Anyone here also geriatric? I would say... here's a couple other choices. Mario Land 2, even though it's kind of short and a little too easy. Uh, this. Metal Gear Solid on the Game Boy, I remember, was cool, but I didn't finish it. I don't know if I would like it as much these days, but I remember it, it, it being pretty neat. It got a lot of the Metal Gear Solid stuff pretty accurately. For the hardware. Ghost Babble, yeah. Uh, what else did I like on the Game Boy? I played... I played a lot of Tetris. I mean, the original, you know, Pokémon, of course, but I... that's another thing where I didn't finish it. Metroid 2... I loved as a kid. But it is a very obtuse and frustrating game at times, but I still loved it. Because... It scared the shit out of me. And it had a really cool ending. The original Kirby's Dream Land I liked, but it was a very basic form of Kirby. But I, it was a game I just played over and over and over again, just because it was... It had a lot of little memorable moments. And, again, when you're a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, you don't have access to Steam and emulation, so if you have four games on your Game Boy, you're gonna play those four games over and over again. There was that Mario and Donkey Kong game, but I didn't have it. I only, like, borrowed it from a friend, and that was pretty cool. I think because I had a lot of Game Boy games and I just don't remember which ones I liked the most. I can't like the ones I listed, of course, but there's there's definitely more. I just can't remember them. That's Donkey Kong ninety four. Yes, Donkey Kong ninety four. That's the one. Too many... <laughs> that there have been that many Donkey Kongs.
Th those are ducks with swords or boomerangs? I'm not really sure. I'm gonna say that they're boomerangs. Why does Nintendo always make, like, weird cloud faces? If an enemy gets hit by lightning, you get 10 coins for it. Oh, that's cool. Mario's dopey fucking face, I swear to god. <laughs> Oh yeah, Kid Icarus on the Game Boy. I liked Kid Icarus on the Game Boy. In some ways, I think it was even better than the, the NES one. Of Myths and Monsters was the subtitle. But the other issue I had with that game was it was almost too similar to the NES one. For all its, uh, you know, flaws. It, it, like, Kid Icarus is still... Last time I streamed it, I was, like, very frustrated by it. But I can't help but like that game. I just like it. I know what I don't like about it, but it doesn't stop me from wanting to replay it once in a while. I know a lot of that is nostalgia. It's a powerful drug. It's potent. It's a potent potable. I had this book that had, like, um, cheats and, like, little guides and just info about various Game Boy games. And there were a number of Game Boy games that I was reading about that seemed interesting to me that I did not have. But it was, like, a really... That book is long gone by now, but it was, like, a really early 90s book, so it might have been, like, 91 or 2. And the games looked like fucking calculator games. There was one, like, called Box Boy. It was like, yeah, you move a box. I was like, ah, oh, I'm good. I don't want that. Would you consider streaming the very first Mana game? No. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I downloaded Echoes of Mana. Or mana, whatever you want to say. Which is... A mobile mana game. I saw an advertisement for it, I was like, oh, it's out! I uninstalled it very quickly. It is a gotcha game. It... The art style is very crusty to me. I, maybe some people like it. But just the visuals just looked so, like, cheaply ugly. It felt cynical. Like, all the magic of the Mana series is gone. Like, the Mana Tree has been wrung from its roots of all the things that made it so special. And, you know, it's just a, another... It's just another cash grab, mobile, gotcha game with um, all the characters that you love that you have to pay for if you want to get them because they're rare. The gameplay is mobile gameplay, meaning, and, and even, like, to me, I felt zero connection to the combat. Like, you're doing combat, and you press a button, and then you see it happen later. Um, you move around, 
there were things I was doing in combat that just weren't happening, and I guess I was playing the game wrong. I guess the game is like... It almost feels like it plays itself, but you just have to make sure it plays itself by playing a... by pressing a couple buttons. It's just not... that's not the type of game I'm interested in at all. Like, I just don't... It looked weird, the limbs on the characters, like, the, the animations were like... like, crusty flesh. But yet high quality at the same time, it's really hard to explain. But again... That series has just... had some real fucking clunkers. Have you heard of the Square Enix sellout? Yeah, they sold a bunch of their, uh, stuff like Tomb Raider. Yeah, I don't know. Squ apparently Square also lost, like, millions of dollars on the, um, Marvel properties that they've acquired. They're such a frustrating company. It's like... Here's the thing, Nintendo... I have a lot of nostalgia for Square stuff, and I love a lot of their games. Like, dearly. My favorite game of all time is a Square game. But... Which is Chrono Trigger, as most of you know, but for anyone just joining, hello, uh, that's my favorite game. That said... Nintendo makes awful business anti-consumer decisions. Right? Nintendo can be really, really frustrating and do lots of fun things to screw over their customers or make us feel like they're just, like, scraping our wallets. However... And they do really dumb things to their fans. However, Square Enix does all that and then ruins really perfectly great franchises with dumb remakes or, like, awful decisions. Thanks, Square, every 20 minutes, too, by the way. It's like... I get people love Final Fantasy XIV, I love Final Fantasy VII Remake, but they're doing all the same shit, and they are so wildly inconsistent. Ugh. Just a shame. Anyway, I hope we get another mana game with, you know, actual, like, care and love put into it from a developer who wants to make it, and not just some cynical mobile cash grab. It's not like I didn't know what the game was going to be. But I had to see for myself. And then when you get to a certain point, like, the download is very quick. You get the game, you jump right in, you do a couple battles, you get some storyline, it's weird. There's some fierce heads. And then it's like, would you like to download 1.5 gigs of data now? It's like, well, what did it download the first time? Smart. Very smart. They give you, like, 5% of the game and 5% of the download so that they can hook you. They give you the tutorial, and then you download the 1.5 gigs once you're hooked. I didn't know that because I don't download mobile games, but... Apparently, that is a very specific tactic that mobile games employ. I did not know that. I did not know that. Yes, sir! Yes! LARGE DOWNLOAD! That's right, wild, wild stuff. Yes. The, the greed? has not been particularly good to Wario so far. It's not a tactic, it lets you play a demo, because mobile games are huge on phones. Alright, yeah, no, fair enough. I see what you mean. Vinny, remember as a kid the dopamine rush you'd get from being able to go on AOL and play Slingo in the late 90s, early 2000s? Holy shit, Slingo. Oh my god. Haven't thought of Slingo. Oh, I was very addicted to Slingo. That was like... the thing to do when you first got a computer. In the 90s. Now, they have Slingo slot machines at Atlantic City. 
So it's still kind of a thing. It's just, like, name recognition at this point. But yeah, that was... For those that don't know, it was like a slot machine bingo kind of thing. I don't even really remember, but it was just a thing... It was like a... a thing that people would do. You, you just... you had to. You had no choice. You had to play Slingo. Plans to continue Mega Man Zero Collection. Yeah, forgot about that. Um, no, not right now. We'll see what the next several months and summer brings, but thank you for reminding me. There's always a chance. It's a good game. Well, good games. And they just get bitter. <laughs> bitter! <laughs> wow! What happened? Why is Mega Man Zero so bitter? Uh, they just get better, from what I understand. More Rogue Legacy 2. Yeah, I have another Rogue Legacy 2 video on the way. Um... I have some... I'm probably gonna do another Turbo Overkill, if you watch that one. Because that game is actually very good. I played the Dune game. I have footage of the Dune game. I've got three hours. That'll be soon. Um, I like it. I don't know how much of it I'm going to play, but... There's a chance I would play more. I would just need to start a new game, because I think... You know, like, the, the matches could take, like, five to ten hours, I think, if you... I guess depending on how well you play, or what level the opponents are on. But yeah, it's a real-time strategy 4X game. Vinny, no offense, but you don't strike me as a strategy person. Well, then you don't know how obsessed I was with StarCraft. Warcraft. Ah, oh, damn it. I was obsessed with StarCraft, Warcraft 3, Warcraft 2, Command and Conquer. Uh, StarCraft 2. I got to Silver League at one point in StarCraft 2. <laughs> yeah, no, I loved real time strategy. I just, the 4X stuff, I don't know if I like as much. Because it's just, the matches take too damn long. But I like, um... The faster pace of the classic RTS. So this one's cool, though. There's a lot to like about it. It's just, there's a lot of... There's a lot of game. And if you... For me, if you're, like, two hours into a match, and you can't, like, in this game, you have to, like, compete by getting, um... Reputation? I forget what they call it in-game. It might be Reputation. Uh, I, hegemony? And the first person of 50k... ...wins. And, like, two hours in, you can start to see some, like, huge discrepancies. And, um, granted, I'm still new to the game... ...but I feel like... ...when you've spent two hours and you're like, there may be no way to win this. That sucks. Hegemony? Hegemony?
what's the highest you've ever gotten your APM? Is that like my SAT score? Uh, never particularly high. Just because I like real-time strategy doesn't mean I'm good at it. Damn it. God damn it. I gotta be focused. My eyes have to be wide focused open. No, wide focused open was a an edited for TV version of something that Sam Jackson said. I think he had he in the movie was supposed to say or he said, uh, my eyes are wide fucking open. And for TV, they did, uh... My eyes are wide focused open. Oh, this is a really annoying boss. Holy shit. Can't help but notice that the remaining treasures spell out E F J L N O. Eh, fuck J Leno. That's what it says. That's what it spells. I don't have, like, an irrational hatred for Jay Leno, by the way. It's totally rational. No, I, I really, I don't hate the guy. I don't know the guy. I just don't think he's funny. He took Conan's show. Or, you know, I say he did, there's a lot of politics behind that, there's a lot of discussion behind it. There's the whole Letterman debacle, of which Letterman was the worthy successor to the late-night show. 
And Jay was like, well, I'll do it. I don't know. They have to he can't do it. I, I got it. I got it. But some of it was out of his hands. Um... You know, whatever. Guy likes cars. I don't- I don't really care. I don't like Mike Love. Mike Love of the Beach Boys is an awful, awful human. But Jay Leno... He's not as... He's not as terrible. He was just very good at making people who grew up in the Depression laugh. So... What's wrong with Mike Love? Well, Mike Love is currently claiming to be the Beach Boys. Um, he's the cousin of Brian Wilson, who's the genius behind that band. When they were, you know, at their best, when he was at his best. Mike Love may have contributed to Brian losing, well, his, his mojo, his mind, whatever, you know. There's a lot to it. Um, he would kind of pick on his cousin and, oh. Their album Pet Sounds, he gave him a lot of shit. Oh man, I can't get that now. He's very arrogant. He wrote a terrible album called Summer in Paradise. He's creepy, he's, like, weird. I mean, there's a lot. There's a video about a lot of the stuff that he's done. Um... Yeah, he definitely uses Rivers of Blood only. He berated Brian Wilson for suffering through mental illness. That's one way to describe it. Yes, okay, alright, everybody, if you want to know what's wrong with Mike Love, watch Todd in the Shadows video on Summer of Love. Perfect. So Todd in the Shadows covers music on his channel, and yeah, he did a video about, it's called Train Records, about albums that are just like disasters. And he covered Summer in Paradise. After Kokomo became a hit, um, which was, by the way, totally unexpected, because that was, a, like, a late career resurgence for them, Mike Love was like, I'm just gonna do an album of Kokomo's. And they were all terrible. Do you remember Mike Love's COVID song? <laughs> Wait, how did it go? Wasn't, wasn't there a funny lyric? I don't believe in COVID! No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was some dumb fucking song about the first responders. It was like... It, the sentiment was nice, I guess, but the song was dog shit. Mike Love couldn't write his way out of a used condom. First responders and the National Guard. Doctors and nurses are all working real hard. Yeah. This too shall pass. Right, that's the name of the song. I mean, again, the sentiment is fine. It's just... I don't know. That, that dude, he's, he's a... Yeah. There's... <laughs> When the Beach Boys got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Mike Love went on stage, and he was drunk, and he started shitting on, like, ev like his peers. We ain't no Beatles, we never quit touring! And he just got really belligerent for some reason, and he just started calling people out. I, I don't know, he's just a... 
like, seems like an angry dude. Anyway, that's, that's old news. I, I've covered the Mike Love thing. That was like a, an old Vine Sauce thing. That's why Mike Love has shown up in various uh, streams and video games I've played in the past. I just don't like what he did to his cousin Brian, who was a very sensitive guy, who, again, was behind all of the best Beach Boys stuff. Like, the stuff that wasn't just like, We go surfing and we look at girls! We're going waving and we're gonna curl! Like, the stuff that had real substance, and real sadness and emotion, like, like the good vibrations, stuff from pet sounds, some stuff after that, um... Like, any of that stuff was Brian Wilson. And then later, you know, there was a couple decent songs after that. From the rest of the Beach fe uh, Fellows. Also, Dennis Wilson, who died tragically, dude has an amazing solo album called Pacific Ocean Blue that Taylor Hawkins was a big fan of. And, um, actually finished one of his incomplete songs. Kind of sad in retrospect, but... Uh, yeah, Dennis Wilson was the drummer, and that Pacific Ocean Blue album, I think, is fantastic. Friends is an okay album. No, I like Friends. It's very hippy-dippy-trippy bullshit, but I like a lot of it. Friends is good. Sunflower has a couple good songs. Surf's Up is actually one of my favorite albums of theirs, if not, if only for the, the last couple of songs. Surf's Up, the song is great. Um, Till I Die is a great song. I like Don't Go Near the Water. There's a lot of really cool songs on there. Extend. Long Promised Road is good. There's a song called A Day in the Life of a Tree, which I'm not really into, but it's kind of wacky. Um, someone said, I haven't heard anything of the Beach Boys, with the exception of I Get Around, and that has been motivated me to not listen to any more of it. Well, here's what I would say. If, if, uh, you want a couple cool songs that might break the, uh, the, the preconceived notion of what that band is, listen to Till I Die, Beach Boys Till I Die, save that for later. Listen to Wouldn't It Be Nice. Um, basically anything on the Pet Sounds album. And then there's this, like, kind of legendary album called Smile, which was never finished. And it's just, like, avant-garde, but also very pop. It's hard to explain. They never finished it, but they got kind of close, and then Brian finished it later on in life. But I really like the Smile album. To me, if it was finished in the 60s, it probably maybe would have been their best album. But alas, Mike Love was like, Hey Brian, you're a fucking idiot. I don't know what he said. He might have... whatever. He did say that Brian had the ears of a dog, because he would hear all these things in the, in the recordings, and he, like, no one else could hear. Like, um, just... He would be a perfectionist, and... His, his cousin was like, you got the ears of a dog, you can hear, like a dog can. And I think that's why he eventually named the album Pet Sounds. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, alright, well fuck you then. Anyway. Well, 
Well, he he said it as a. It sounds like a compliment because if you have the ears of a dog, it means you can hear lots of things. But I think because of the perfectionist nature, it, it was regarded as a um, as a slight. Like, what are you making us do? You're talking about stuff we don't hear, and it seems unnecessary. So anyway, thank you for watching the Beach Boys podcast with Wario Land background information. Paul McCartney is coming around again, and I kind of want to go see him again. I saw him in 2017, and he was actually very good. It was a great show. Problem is... I watched some videos of his most recent tour. He's 80, almost. And you can hear it, you know? And I... I mean... Five years ago, he sounded a little bit better. Just sucks that people get old. What can I say? But such is life. I missed a secret up there. I needed to be Garlic Wario. I mean, the show is still good. There's some uh, videos. Like, he does a three-hour-long show. His band is great. He still plays great. It's just his voice doesn't have the same power it used to. I, why would it? He's 80. But he does play a lot of the hits, and they still sound pretty good. Vinny, do you think you'll be streaming when you approach 50? <laughs> yeah, good... Good point, chat member. I, I'm, I'll think about it. Um... I don't know. Who will be streaming at 50? Will it just be robots? Is it, is it just gonna be bots streaming to bots by then? Uh... I don't know, what will the meta be at 50? It's not that far from now, by the way. That's only like 14 years from now. <laughs> I, you know, the whole landscape of the internet could change. You might not even be able to play games on the internet anymore because, you know, maybe copyright laws will just get more stupid. So, I don't know. Um, at the very least, I, I would love to be able to do something video game related. It is a, a hobby and a passion that I don't want to stop doing anytime soon. Like, why would I stop playing video games at any point in my life? Unless I physically couldn't. And why would anyone make anyone else feel guilty about playing video games at any age? It is the most popular form of entertainment on the planet. I like talking about them, I like playing them. I don't really see any reason I wouldn't. I just also... You know, I like to exist as a as a human being. So if it ever got like crusty and weird, I might take a step back. I don't know. Just have to see where life takes me, I guess. Lemmy is almost fifty. Is he really almost fifty? Lemmy, how old is Lemmy? He's forty-seven. I mean, he looks pretty good. I would have thought he was in his early 40s. So that's like an extra five years off of that, but still. Yeah, Lemmy, Lemmy's just gonna continue doing his thing, and we're all the better for it. Truthfully. Is Lemmy the feathers guy? Steel. Heavy on feathers. That guy, yeah. Fucking 
but hey, we'll also, if I'm still streaming at that age, uh, chat, if you're still around, you'll, you'll be in your 40s, maybe, some of you. So... Uh-oh. Some of you will be in your 30s. But also, everyone else will be, too. Like, the people that grew up watching streams and videos will also have aged. <laughs> you know, so it's like, there, there. I think there's always going to be a market for this. It's just a matter of, will it be viable to continue? It's not like a high stress, it's not like skateboarding. You know, like Tony Hawk, that documentary... The name of it is Until the Wheels Fall Off, and there's a whole section about him aging and not being able to do the thing he loves the most. That's fucking depressing. So... You know, it, it's cool that this is a hobby that I have that I can probably do when I'm in my 50s, and, and same for music. Like, I don't want to stop doing either of those things, and luckily, you can sit for both. I'm not going up a half pipe. One day there will be a president who thanks you for inspiring him in his youth. See, that's not true because the president will likely be like 90. So what, I, like, am I inspiring someone who's like, you know, 20 years older than me? I'll be dead before we get a president that could say something like that. Ah, oh, God damn it. Yes, we, we may only have octogenarians as presidents or as leaders. Sorry. The problem is, like, when you see... For me... Like, when I think of, um, wise, like, sage, like, wizard people who, like, you know, in fantasy, who, like, run the tribe, you know, it's like, because they have the most experience, they've been doing it for so long, like, in fantasy shows and stories, that works really well, because, you know, it's fantasy, and things aren't changing as much as they change in real life. In the past 25 years alone, Life has changed so much. Like, the internet, phones, the metaverse, everything has changed so fast, so quickly. Like, w like life has evolved. It's not static. I mean, even in the past hundred years, thinking about, like, aviation and how we went from, like, planes to moon landing, allegedly. <laughs> no, to, like, rockets and, and like... Like, this is, like, bizarro shit. The fact that we've advanced so quickly, um, in the human race. Like, at an astounding rate. So, to me, it's really interesting. But then, as a result, if we have these, like, octogenarian 70, 80-year-old people, like... They're not living in the same world because they- they grew up in a different, like, fucking world entirely, almost. Got lucky there. Not so lucky there, though. Oh shit, here we go. The leader of the, uh, Syrup Gang. Brown Sugar Pirates. 
Oh yeah, no, this isn't political. This is just this is just about like I guess you could view it as political talk, but I'm what I'm I guess it, it's across the board across any country. It, it's not like um about one side or another or anything like that. It's just kind of a general thing. I don't remember how to do this fight. What just happened? Hello? What the fuck? I didn't load anything. I don't have it bound to a button. No. My controller does not have load state. Piracy protection? No. No. The screen tearing got pretty bad. It did. It did. Um. That's not good. I mean, that, that's good, at least. But, um, I have to get back there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quick save real quick. Yep, yeah, no button on my controller is load state. Keep throwing the lamp until it makes platforms? Okay, thanks. Yeah, the screen tearing got really bad, so it, it could have something to do with this color version. This new, cool and legal, super totally cool, totally legal version of Wario Color. It, yeah, it looks like the piracy protection thing was not accurate. It just seemed to be a thing that happened. That maybe BGB overloaded? I don't know. to do a save here. Solar flare event from RimWorld. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Quantum entanglement, perhaps. Oh, the screen tearing is happening again. Little genies. Oh, oh, that's not good. I got a time limit before the thing crashes. It looks like this is a known issue. 
Elizarin just looked it up. It looks like this is a known issue. Great. That's weird that that didn't work. I don't get it. You weren't high enough? gonna keep loading from here because uh, it's also getting kind of late and I just don't want to deal with the crashing and the fact that I have to go back and do that stuff again. Sorry. There we go. Got a bonk. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. Don't crash. Got it. Whoa, all right. I'm gonna do another save state, just in case. So there's the connection to Mario. It's, uh, Princess. It's Princess Peach. Why? Also, hey Mario, what, what you doing? Alright, fuck you. Ear pierce music, very nice. It's painful. Yeah, so that was kind of a dick move on Wario's... ...part. Mario's part. Uh, did I say Mario? Yeah, I think I did. Dick move! Steer up so stole that from the kingdom, Mario took it back. To be fair, this is payback for the castle hijack thing. Yeah, but why did Mario have a castle in the first place? So now, what the game does is, it adds up all your coins and treasures, and you get an ending. This has been done since then, but, um... It is very possible that you could just end up living in a tree stump. Oh man, if I got those last few treasures, I'd be, like, super rich.
every 20k changes the ending. Alright, well, Tree Stump has been deconfirmed. The best ending for this game takes Wario to the moon. You can get the whole ass moon for the best ending. <laughs> like my cousin, that's right. I forget Quark's cousin's name, but he has a, he has a moon. You can just grind. I guess you could. We're not going to get beyond 60k. Gala? Oh, yeah. Unless this is worth 9,000, it's not. One stage you can feed enemies to one an into one another for lots of cash. Well, it's a pretty decent score. We won't get a moon, but we're not gonna live inside of a fucking tree. So there, there's that. E.F.J. Leno. I know. I know. Cool fucking genie that requires money to grant wishes. Alright. It's okay. It's like a cabin. It's like a schoolhouse. So... I can show you the other, um... The other ones. For some reason, they're not... No. So here's... If you really suck... Okay. You live in a birdhouse, so that's the worst one. Then there's... So, so birdhouse is worst. Then there's tree trunk. Which is... Second worst. And that is between... 10,000 and 40,000. Then there's this one, which is the one I have now. I'm gonna just lay them all out. So this is 40,000 to 70,000. So yeah, I wasn't gonna get this unless I got quite a bit more coinage. Okay, then there's this one. So this is next. That is 70,000 to 90,000. It's a pagoda. Okay. Then there's this fucking massive castle. And that is 90,000 to 99.999,000. And if you get 99,999 uh, 99, coins, all 15 treasures, and 40 courses cleared, you get... Wario Moon. You just- you just get a moon. So, those are the endings. How do you live on that moon? There's no air. 
no airco. Kohagen, these people need the air. That's worse than the stump. How do you even get to the moon? It's a lot of maintenance, too. Think about how much you have to, like, pay to keep up with the moon. It's just not worth it. Does anything else happen? Um, is our new song on Spotify for anyone else? By the way? It is. It is officially on there. Very nice. Yeah, I was hoping it would have launched at midnight. Because that was, you know, what was supposed to happen. And that way I could have at midnight been like, oh, by the way, check Spotify, everybody. Anyway, uh, Gunpei Yokoi. In many ways, the father of Metroid. And Game Boy. Please, retry. No. No, I'm good. Well, that was Wario Land 1. Um, my impressions of this game... I thought it was harder than the game actually was, for one. Two, it's still fun. It's a good Wario game. It's a good start to a series. It's an impressive Game Boy game. I mean, it's a little simplistic, but it's also of its time. Um, I like the treasure system, which would later be in many other games, including Wario and um, the Great Cave Offensive and Kirby. And uh, there's there's replay value if you want to get that moon. I never did as a, as a kid, but I remember completing it and enjoying the completion at least. So yeah, solid game, really solid. Probably one of the better Game Boy, uh, Game Boy regular, Game Boy Crust games. Thanks for watching. It was cool. At some point, we'll do Wario Land three. Which ending did you get as a kid? I don't, I don't remember. Probably this or the fucking tree stump. <laughs> I don't know. I, I probably beat this game at least a half a dozen times as a kid, though. Because it only takes about four hours, right? So, probably went back a number of times. All right, everybody, thank you for watching Bird Game and Wario. I'll be around soonish. I don't know when, with more things. And also check the Full Sauce channel, and you will see other things over the next couple days. So, good night, and also thank you for listening to the music, if you did. Uh, for those that missed it, the announcement one more time is that Visions is actually the first half of a double album and the double album I've been holding on to this we've been working on it even during making the 10 songs for Visions we had like an extra five that we were like let's do let's do a double so the double album will be happening um, later this summer probably late summer I would imagine and uh, yeah the clues were there some some people actually kind of figured it out a little bit, but maybe they didn't know it was going to be another 10 songs. So between uh, the double album and an extra five, people will have lots of new stuff, and I think, I think it's pretty good. I'm biased. I always say that. I always think it's great just as, up until release, and then just after release, and I'm like, it's the worst thing I've ever done. But at the very least, right now, I'm pretty happy with it. So... I hope uh, I hope people that like the music enjoy. Thank you for giving it a shot. If you haven't, uh, no need to. But thanks for listening to my speeches. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Have a good night. Check out other streamers, my mods. They do a very good job at streaming as well. And I'm going to try to host someone now if anyone's live. Good night.
Uh, Jabroni Mike is live and Desert P both live. I'm going to host Desert P, but also Mike is a good streamer too. Okay, goodbye. How do I... How do I do this? I need to stop being live. How do I... I don't know how to raid. Okay, goodbye.